I think we're in the middle of a very interesting period of time right now. I think cryptocurrencies are a bit like the Wild West and there's a lot of um, uh, regulation and a lot more oversight that's needed to understand the direction of travel and that's slowly starting to happen if you see what central banks and, and other regulators are starting to look at. Um, I think they're uh, potentially uh, going to have an impact on how um, both digital e-commerce happens but also wider things like how fundraising happens for example with ICOs. Well, I don't even think it's a matter of the next few years. I think um, the accountancy profession is already dealing with the, the issue of cryptocurrencies. Um, we at ACCA have issued a uh, public notice to say that uh, things like Bitcoin um, need to be understood better by the profession. Um, there are some inherent risks in it. Um, for example, the high volatility of it and also the fact that the pseudonymous nature of Bitcoin means that while you know the target addresses of where money is going, the Bitcoins are going, you don't necessarily know who the beneficial owners are behind that. And that is a money laundering and a terrorist financing risk for the profession. Um, so I think for the profession, um, there are very various different ways in which this affects what they do. At a more generic level, I think there is a piece around upskilling on product, because if your clients are starting to involve themselves in this, then you need to understand what they're doing in order to be able to assure what they're doing, to be able to conduct audits potentially in the future. Um, from a risk and governance perspective, there's clearly a huge implication. Also from a board level and corporate governance perspectives, there are huge implications. Um, I think at the more kind of um, um, operational level, in terms of being able to figure out how these things need to be taxed, I think a lot of tax authorities around the world are still starting to figure out and there, there are multiple different opinions. Um, obviously, Bitcoin has moved a lot. There was a time when it was uh, a cool thing to buy coffee in a coffee shop at a, you know, uh, kind of uh, artisan coffee shop using Bitcoin. I think those days are behind us because it's gone up so much in value and now it's become a legitimate store of value for many people. So I think that changes the way you look at it and how it's going to be taxed and how it's going to enter potentially the, um, uh, the world of um, reporting and taxation and all the rest of it. Authorities around the world, uh, whether it's the HMRC in the UK or other tax authorities around the world, are currently grappling with this question. Um, they are looking at it from a lot of different angles, as you might expect. Capital gains is one way to think about it. If you, if you accept that um, as a unit of account is one thing, but if you accept it as a store of value which you hold, then capital gains is the likely direction to go. Um, but obviously these are things which are evolving in real time. From our perspective as ACCA, we work closely with tax authorities and regulators to be part of their consultations. Ultimately, they are the ones who have to make that determination, but we are part of that dialogue as things stand. Um, I, I think for us, um, we, we, are, we would still advise caution. Um, we would still advise that um, you need to be uh, really clear as to what the uh, source of the funds is, um, because from a uh, governance and a professional accountant point of view, the source of the funds and the use of the funds is extremely important. In this case, um, there would need to be real um, uh, clarity and a lot further understanding of how those cryptocurrencies have been generated, in which jurisdiction they've been generated, because these are globally transferable. Um, and I think there would also need to be um, uh, a lot more of an understanding of um, where the, um, uh, the exchange points have been through which uh, exchanges they've, they've gone through in, in acquiring these currencies. So I think uh, our general view would be that um, it is early days yet. I started saying this is a bit of the Wild West and um, we would advise caution at this stage. So I think uh, blockchain or more generally distributed ledger technology is inherently a very interesting technology that has the potential to really change uh, the way companies operate and the way industries operate and that's what makes it interesting. It's an ecosystem technology. It's not just about one company's systems. Um, and I think because of that, it has the potential to really change um, business models, value creation models. We're already seeing that. You already see in the financial services, payments are, are being affected. Um, new ways of doing things like trade finance are coming up. So this is something which is already in play. And when I look ahead, what I see is a steady evolution. We've come from proof of concept to use cases, to production stage. And I think now what we're starting to think about a lot more is how to scale it properly, how to have security embedded into it, and how to have something that works ultimately in the public interest as well. A very good place to start is a piece of uh, thought leadership that we put out a few months ago called the Professional Accountant's Guide to Distributed Ledgers and Blockchain. It really explains blockchain from the perspective of the profession. 
and it talks about how it could impact considerations relevant to the profession, such as how it affects audit, how it might affect um, the business model of audit firms and professional practices. So that could be one place to start. What I would say is you have to engage with it. You can't be like an ostrich and dig your head in the sand and say, I'm just going to wish this away because I don't think it's just going to go away. Um, so it's important to engage with it, to build up your understanding of it. And I think it's also important to um, understand where the risks are and also where the value is. You've got to take a balanced approach to this. As I said earlier, if your clients are starting to engage with this, you can't ignore it.